Hey guys, Frightener22 here. Welcome back to yet another installment of Frightener22's Saturday Night Movie Drive-In. It's a really late New Jersey night, so I figured, since I'm going to be up, I may as well party like a vampire. So I figured, tonight we're going to be taking a look at 1988's My Best Friend is a Vampire. Now, for starters, I think this is actually one of the best horror comedies of the 1980s, and it's really simple to see why. I mean, it's got a really simplistic story. It deals with um, a young teenager uh, played by Robert Sean Leonard. Yeah, this is 1988, so this is pre-Dead Poet Society, pre-House MD, all that shit. So he plays a teenager who's um, running a delivery for the food store that he works for, and he goes to this um, this old dingy mansion that's been deserted for years, and he becomes... Um, you know, he d delivers the groceries for some hot chick that's there waiting for him, and she pretty much seduces him into having sex with her. Lo and behold, the bitch turns out to be a vampire, bites his neck, so obviously he, it, you know, obviously comes out becoming that he turns into a vampire. So, um, as the next days uh, continue to unfold, weird things become, um, you know, changing about, you know, his whole body and what have you. So, it isn't until um, a mysterious uh, man by the name of Murdoch comes along, who's actually a vampire, and is there to actually help Jeremy make his transition into the new world of being a vampire. So, uh, you know, in lieu of, you know, dealing with the new, the new changes in becoming a vampire... Jeremy not only has to worry about, um, you know, cap, you know, sealing a deal with um, this chick that he's been dreaming about at school by the name of Darla, admitting to his best friend Ralph that he's a vampire, and of course always, you know, having these two wonderful bumbling vampire hunters on his ass trying to kill him, but it isn't until, you know, towards the end of the movie that these vampire hunters actually you know, understand that Jeremy is actually the vampire. They think his best friend Ralph is the vampire the entire time. So tons of funny hijinks ensue as these, you know, bumbling vampire hunters are trying to, you know, capture Ralph and kill him. So that's basically the gist of the plot. And as, as I said, as simple as that is, it's actually a really, really fun and effective movie. I just always remember watching this movie on HBO and just loving the hell out of it. It was such a a crying to know that this movie was never out on DVD until, um, until about April of last year. It wasn't until Lionsgate released, um, this film in their Lionsgate Lost collection. Um, you know, about, uh, seven other titles came out last year under this banner, including, um, you know, the long-desired uncut version of Slaughter High, along with the 1990s spoof film Repossessed, as well as a bunch of other 80s films, such as Morgan Stewart's Coming Home, and, you know, just a bunch of other ones that are probably worthy checkouts but those three main horror ones were the big ones that uh horror fans in the in the horror community have been longing for you know for a really really long time um interestingly enough the director of this film is jimmy houston and although that might not be a household name uh, a slasher that he directed in 1981 is very very well known in the horror community he's actually responsible for the 1981 slasher film final exam yeah who knew right so, um, going into that, this film is just a lot, a lot of fun. I really remember watching this movie a lot as a kid on HBO, and the beauty about this movie actually finally being released on, um, DVD, it's, it's funny, because, you know, people that collect DVDs, there's, you know, everyone has their, um, habits that they're always really, you know, rowdy about, you know, when they hear that a film has been released on DVD that's not in widescreen and it's in shitty full screen, yada yada. I mean, yeah, I'll be the first one to admit I'm totally guilty of all that shit and what have you, but the films that were released under the Lionsgate, um, the Lost Collection banner, are in full screen, so I can already understand that a lot of people might be really pissed off, but interestingly enough, it's a movie like My Best Friend as a Vampire that the full, full screen thing actually enhances the viewing you know, the viewing experience, because like I said, I grew up watching this shit on HBO, and the print, it looks fine, but it just has that really great, you know, just enough, you know, mud in the print where there's got some, a few spots on it, and that full screen presentation that really just subjects me back to those wonderful days as a kid when I would just pop on HBO and see that. I mean, really, the only thing that you're really missing from this to really match those times is just that transparent little HBO or, you know, Showtime logo in the corner. But other than that, I mean, the DVD looks good, and it really did bring me back to those, you know, those years past where I, you know, discovered this film and loved it for what it was. Like, um, the hijinks and the hilarity in this film are just really, really incredible. And a lot of that um, is, in, is due in credit to Jeremy's best friend in the film, Ralph. And I don't know about you guys, but watching this movie again after so many years, I can't help but feel that 
Ralph's presence in this movie, he just strikes me so much as John Fa uh, Favreau from um, particularly his role in Rudy. I don't know why I like pop this movie out because I hadn't seen it in so many years and I was actually trying to remember if John Favreau actually played his best friend in the movie but lo and behold it wasn't him but you know there's there was just something about this guy's look and the way he handled handled himself and his presence that just kept making me think of John Favreau but a lot of a lot of the comic relief comes from his best friend it's really really hilarious all these awesome scenes of them um in his in Ralph's uh, convertible with Jeremy that they're just trying to dodge these vampire hunters and weaving in and out of weaving in and out of like crazy traffic and what have you. So it's really, really cool. Um, you know, the cool touches that they add is that the vampires in this film, Jeremy and, you know, his mentor aren't exactly trying to, you know, kill humans. They're actually just trying to make a point that they're just like any other minority in the world. So they don't go and seek out humans to kill. They actually go and drink pig's blood because, you know, after all, vampires do thirst for blood. So it's a cool little thing that they do. They buy like six packs of pig, pig's blood at an all night butcher house and stuff it's it's really cool and really tongue-in-cheek and funny um another cool interesting note about this film is that the love interest that jeremy is interested in the girl darla um jeremy actually goes to her house to take her out on a date and her uh you know parents are really annoying and trying to snap pictures of them and what have you before they embark on their date and look closely because in this brief scene you actually catch a really really early role from kathy bates who who plays darla's mom in it so that was the one thing that i blatantly never realized until um this viewing uh for the sake of this review so that was really cool to actually catch you know after so many years of not seeing this film that you know uh, you know a big uh, big role or uh, big actress such as uh, Kathy Bates started a little, you know, horror comedy, you know, from 1988, such as this one. The bubbling uh, vampire hunters, one of them is actually played by, I actually forget the guy's name, what's his name? David Warner. He plays uh, the professor, and the lead professor, and he has a bumbling fat sidekick, but David Warner's been in a lot, a lot of cool shit. Um, he was in uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. He's worked with James Cameron in Titanic. And he's he was also in Waxwork, which is a great film if you guys have never seen. So it's really cool to get um to get him, you know, his presence in. He's really funny in a lot of scenes too. So the hilarity that comes out of the vampires hunters trying to catch Ralph and Jeremy is really, really cool and really, really great. You know, not much can really be said else about this film. It's just that, you know, you know, Lionsgate really did hit the nail on the head by, you know, throwing this movie under the Lost Collection banner because it really is. It's a really, really underrated film that deserves a little bit more attention, you know, a little bit more attention than it's ever really gotten. I mean, you know, it's not a perfect film. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it will entertain the hell out of you for 89 minutes. I mean, um, I was just so happy to just, you know, pop this in and, you know, relive it from, you know, all those years back that I had gone not seeing it. And, you know, another thing that I had never noticed before... Um, you know, now that I'm older and I'm more aware of the bands, this movie has, has actually got a really, really great, you know, 80s soundtrack to boot. I mean, you get the likes of Blondie and Tim Buck 3, and I even think you get a little Oingo Boingo in there. But, you know, nonetheless, um, this uh, DVD release actually managed to secure all those music rights, so all the music is, uh, you know, fully intact in this film. And it just really enhanced that really big and bright vibrant 80s atmosphere that was you know so heavy in this film so i would highly suggest checking this film out like i said it's not a perfect film but it will definitely keep you a shitload entertained for 89 minutes now with hollywood's current trend of remaking every you know decent classic film you know that you know obviously doesn't desire a remake why don't you take a look at a film like 1988's my best friend is a vampire and remake something like this i mean this is a movie that could definitely benefit from being remade so why don't you go dig out this DVD and check it out and maybe, maybe fucking Hollywood would get smart and actually remake something that probably is a little bit more worthy of a remake. So that's all I got for you guys this week. Um, I would like to note that next week's review is actually going to be um, the f season finale. Yeah, I know it's only nine episodes, but it's going to be the season finale. So on the eve of Valentine's Day, what movie do you guys possibly think I'll review? Find out next week to see what it is. As always, guys, thanks again for tuning in to Frightener 22's Saturday Night Movie Drive-In, and I'll see you next Saturday for the season finale's review. Thanks again.